All right, Radiologic Technologies Channel. Today's video is going to be about uh, what a typical day looks like for a rad tech. Now, there's uh, on the outset of this this video, I need to say that first of all, this video series is for people that most likely don't know anything about what we do, uh, but it I, it may have some students watching this that are in the program but haven't started clinical rotations or or, or who knows. But uh, in the world of radiography, uh, we can work in a ton of different environments. People tend to think of just hospitals or maybe outpatient imaging centers, but there's actually a lot of different places we can work. So if you're investigating the field and trying to decide if this is the right career for you, part of why I'm sharing this particular video is so that you know you're not just pigeonholed into working a night shift at a hospital, for example. And... If I'm lucky, my wife, Lisa, who's also an x-ray tech, is going to come in and share uh, what her schedule looks like. She works in an outpatient uh, physician's clinic. Uh, she's a, she's kind of a one, one person show. She has an x-ray room. She does patients. She And she works this cool, like a seven on, seven off. If you haven't heard that, that's that's a, a part time job where you you can work seven days in a row and then have seven off. Or in her particular case, she works like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, has Saturday, Sunday off, and then works Monday, Tuesday, and then they call that uh, a, a one-week work. Then she's off until the following Wednesday. So she gets one week off in between shifts, plus the weekend's off. It's really cool. But a typical day looks completely different depending on where you're at. In fact, in our Facebook group right now, there's this poor tech working at an ortho clinic, which tend to be one of the faster paced environments for, for a radiographer. Uh, and that particular tech is saying she, that that person does about 70 exams a day by themselves in a digital room. That's a lot. And, uh, and I don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. Uh, but that's those ortho clinics. That means you got people walking in, walking out super fast. You've got about three minutes, literally per patient. Um, a runner, a person brings you the patient. You basically say, stand over there or sit over there or, you know, whatever. Put your hand out here. You, you snap your images super quick. Uh, and then the runner takes them back to their room or back out front or whatever. And you're just you're just turning and burning. You're talking 70 exams on an eight hour shift. But that's completely different than like a hospital, which has first, second, third shift. It has weekend shift. It has weekday shift. Uh, the outpatient imaging center like Lisa's at or, or the doctor's office, rather, is just eight to five Monday through Friday. No nights, no weekends. Um, so I, I do have, you know, notes in this. Uh, on, so this whole thing's hosted on my blog where I've been writing about x-ray for years. Um, and I've got a lot of notes in the comment section, as it were, on my blog. But you're probably watching this on YouTube, and there'll be a comment section with some of the notes there. Just know that you get more detail on the on the blog, the radiologictechnologist.com. Uh, but uh, I thought I'd go over what the hospital shift looks like, and then I'll see if I can get my wife in here to talk about the clinic. Are you wanting to do it now or? Okay, so I brought Lisa in. Lisa is a, I don't know how long you've been. You've been out 10 years yet? Yeah. 10-year x-ray tech. We actually went to the same school, but that's for another actually video. Actually, 12 years. Wow. Yeah. So we're talking about what a typical day looks like. In fact, I've got it kind of back here. So I thought you could share what your typical day looks like because you're in a doctor's office, and then I'll talk about what a hospital looks like or maybe an imaging center or something like that. So... Um, I work eight hour shifts with a 30 minute lunch. So eight and a half hours, get a um, 30 minute unpaid lunch. And um, it's just me by myself. So I do it all clock in, I come in and I turn on my computer and get logged into, we use Epic, Epic and PAX, um, you know, and all the other little, you know, my email and um, teams and all that get logged into all that, get my machine turned on. Um, our machine does not require any type of warm up, which is quite nice, but I do probably about every 30 days have to do a calibration on my cassette and that takes a good amount of time. So um, I do that about once a month. Um, and then um, I just wait on patients. I do not have anything that is 
uh, schedule for the day. Mine's all just walk in and things that are ordered from the doctors uh, within the four offices that I service. And then I um, am pretty much in charge of everything. I have to order linens from the hospital and they bring them over for me. Um, gowns, you know, sheets. Uh, we get paper shorts that we have to order. Um, and I just make sure those are stocked. Uh, I do a week on and a week off. So I have a partner that job shares with me. So I usually stock about once a week. So on my last day, I just make sure everything is stocked and ready for her for the for her first day, um, which includes, you know, like wipes and gloves and, you know, anything that we use. Um, and then um, I'm responsible for cleaning the room. I mean, we do have cleaners that come in, but, you know, after each patient, I clean the rooms and um, it's pretty much a one man show. And so if it needs to be done, I do it. So when, so when you come into work, there's not necessarily a list of patients. No. Like in a, in a hospital, you'll come in and you can look and see throughout the day you have patients scheduled that have to come down for small bowel follow-throughs or whatever. And you have to kind of plan mentally. I'm going to start taking care of traumas in the ER. I'm going to start taking care of my walkie talkies that come in and out. And somewhere in here, I have to call transport and have them bring patients down from the floors and work them in while I do all this other stuff. But in your case, Nope. You basically show up, open up shop, and and it's a walk-in basis. Yes. Now, the, does somebody bring you patients and take them back for you, or so do you have to go get the, them? The clinic opens at 8, but they don't have us start till 8.30. And so sometimes I do have patients waiting for me, um, but the clinic's really good about telling them, hey, she doesn't get here till 8.30, and then she's got to turn her machine on, blah, blah, blah. So they know that if they're there early, they are going to wait a little while. Um, uh, we, so the patients are usually brought to us, but if they want the patient back to the doctor, uh, then we are responsible for taking them back. So that means I have two offices that are connected to me that I can get to within the building. And so I think the thing to call out there is in an outpatient center or something like that, or when you're the only person there, mm -hmm. you're kind of stuck there until the last patient is done. And you may or may not have control over, you know, it's just like working in a restaurant and the kitchen closes at 10 and the family yeah. shows up at 9.55 and places an order. They're now stuck there. The people that work in the restaurant are stuck until the food gets served and the people eat and they leave. Healthcare is not a lot different, only that in a hospital setting, for example, when your shift is over, hopefully the next person is there to take over the shift and you can then hand off, if, if it's allowed, hand the patient off to the next person and you can go. Some facilities will say, well, you finish your patient. You never you never ask somebody else to finish your patient. But I don't I've seen places where that's not a problem. I don't I don't think it is a problem personally. But in those kind of facilities, you can try to leave on time or shortly after. But when you're out on your own, there's a chance that you'll be staying late. And and she really doesn't have a say if a doctor calls her at two minutes till closing and says, I'm sorry, but I just got this patient. And I've got to send them to you. She can try to say, well, you know, I've got to go and we do have a hospital right down the street and you can send them down there to get their x-rays. But if that doctor's adamant about it, they're going to send them to you and you're stuck. So that being said, you don't see traumas. I do not. You don't see bones sticking out of no. the skin. You don't. Mm -hmm. You're basically what we call walkie talkies, people that can come I mean, in unassisted for the most part. For the most part. Yeah. Right. And so. Because I mentioned in, in the Facebook group, there's somebody who's mentioning right now that at their ortho clinic, they're doing 70 exams a day. 70 exams is a lot for any one person to do. With, with one tech? Yeah. That's right. But bad. how many patients would you say you do a day at your at your clinic? Ours is... Uh, like 5 to 15? Well, no, we, we usually do at least 10. But we're we're having days, especially recently, that we're doing 32. So it's, it's just still, one tech. It's still a lot. 32 in an eight hour day because yes, ours are walkie talkies, but they're not all simple, easy patients because we have internal meds. So we have lots and lots of elderly. We get lots of um uh nursing home patients because they feel like they can get in and out of our clinic quicker, which those patients are harder because you have to they need lifting help and those kinds of things. Would you say so, you know, uh, how, what percentage of your patients have more than one exam? Um, like most of them are just one exam in and out, or do you get multiple exams? I get multiple exams. 
We do. I would so, say it's 50%, but I'd say it's probably 35, 40%. So on the days you're you're doing 32 exams, you're probably seeing what, 20 patients, 20, 22 patients? Yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah, yeah that's okay. probably pretty fair. Okay. And then at the end of the day, no matter where you're at, you, you have to finish out all your exams. Yes. You have to make sure they've all been assigned for somebody to read them. And in many yes. places, there are multiple radiologists or there are lists, reading lists, some one rad reads the x-ray rays, one rad reads the nuke meds, one rad reads the MRIs, however it's divvied up. It's your job as an x-ray tech to make sure that your studies that you did for the day are assigned to the appropriate person mm -hmm. because there is the chance that you can complete the exam, but it doesn't get to the final destination and you go home for the day and no doctor sees it and a day or two or more goes by and it's hanging out there in limbo and then everybody gets in trouble because studies didn't get right? read. Mm -hmm. So you, you have to make sure at the end of your shift, even after you shut everything down and there's no more patients coming, you need to go through and make sure everything is closed out and, and you've got everything put away. And, mm -hmm. you know, some places ask that you pull the tube down to the table and you yeah, put, things, put things in a certain order. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's definitely a checklist of things you have to do, but that I think that's a good representation of. Yeah, we do. What, I have to close down, shut everything down. I have to make sure everything's assigned, you know, I start and end patients. I have to put notes in, um, you know, just the typical things that everyday techs do. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. I think that pretty much rounds out what a day looks like. Anything else? Mm, no. And I, we do have to bring our own lunch because I, I mean, I guess I could leave 30 minutes isn't a whole lot of time. So for me, it's not worth going somewhere to buy food and get back because um, especially if it is a busy day, since it is only me, I like to just like sit and take a break and not have to like rush to get food and rush to get back and then start right back again. And that that kind of um, reminds me too that when you're in a clinic like you're at, you guys will have potlucks or you guys will have yep. food brought in or somebody will bring in food they made. Yep. Where in the hospital, you don't necessarily see a lot of that. A hospital setting has, you know, the big cafeteria downstairs and everybody either brings their own lunch or they go down to the cafeteria. Some people run off campus. But when you only have a 30 minute lunch, that's not a lot of time. Um, whereas what what I've seen to see when, in these outlying clinics is there's more of a, I don't know if I want to call it a family atmosphere, but everybody kind of discusses it. And, and there's, it's more frequently that food is brought in or, or you celebrate like they just had a going away party, so to speak, for a tech that is leaving. And so they brought in Olive Garden and everybody, mm -hmm. you know, said goodbye to this particular employee and, you don't necessarily, you know, get that camaraderie in a huge x-ray. I mean, you try, yeah. but departments and hospitals are so much bigger and so much harder to coordinate that kind of thing. These little doctor's offices are real easy when you have, you know, 10, 15 people just to coordinate, bringing lunch in and having a little, a little send off or a meeting or whatever. And, and I do feel like our doctors take care of us. So we have lab and x-ray that are right next door that are in our two, our suite that has you know, two doctor's offices. Um, I service four of them, but the lab only services two because there's two labs. So, you know, because lab is even, it's way busier than what I do, but our doctors are great. They include us in everything. Like they got all their nurses um, and staff jackets for Christmas and um, myself and lab was included in that, which was great. I think, I feel like I've been included and treated the best. I mean, they get me something. They got us something for um, tech week, which it's the first time I've had doctors ever get me anything and celebrate and appreciate. So that's always um, nice and uh, greatly appreciated when your doctors appreciate you and you have a good rapport with them. I think that pretty much gives you a little bit of perspective. You know, we're, we haven't talked about what the job looks like if you're a mobile radiographer, you get a van. In fact, go listen to my podcast where I interviewed the mobile radiographer um, in Hollywood. She drives around Hollywood, x-rays the stars, uh, gets paid in Russian chocolate and all kinds of weird stuff or tipped, I should say. Uh, but for the most part, what you wanted to know or what you should know is that, you know, you you prep your day by getting all your stuff ready, get your lunch bag, get your badge, get your decimeter get your water bottle, get everything you need to basically be at a location for the entire day, just in case you get hammered and you don't get a lunch break because it happens more times than we'd like, no matter where you're at. But you get your stuff, you get there. Always get there a little bit early so that you can get set up like there's nothing worse 
than running a department and have technologists who, if your shift starts at eight and they show up at eight and then they go to the locker room and change into their scrubs and they don't get back to the desk till 8.15. Well, all those people on the night shift that wanted to go home at eight are now waiting for you to change in your scrubs and hand off and all that. Just get there a little bit early. I mean, that goes for any job. You should always get to your job just a few minutes early rather than, you know, right on time or a little bit late. Um, get there on, get there a little bit early, get your stuff, you know, start figuring out. Then you got to see what your day looks like. And her, in her case, she has no idea what's going to walk in from day to day. In a hospital, you're going to know, you're going to know, you can look at an ER board and see what's going on. You, you can see, a, you know, stab wound in the chest. Okay, well, they're probably going to need a chest x-ray or shortness of breath with a cough. Well, they're probably going to need a chest x-ray. And I've got five patients on the, the floor who are post-surgery who have had uh, 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 follow-up x-rays every day, a standing order for a morning portable. Uh, you know, all these things, you, you triage all this and figure out how you're going to roll your day out, where you might be able to plan your breaks and whatnot. But, but for the most part, uh, you prepare your rooms, you prepare for your patients, you prepare your equipment, whether it's warm-ups or shutdowns or uh, whatever it is. Um, trying to see if there's anything else on my notes here. Maintaining your records just means, you know, make sure you you put all the notes possible in your exam. It, it, the, it's always good to cover yourself with too many notes rather than not enough notes because if it comes back and a radiologist calls you and says, how come you only did this or how come you did that or or what's the reasoning behind why this x-ray looks so horrible your notes on the film saying uh, best film possible patient couldn't stand uh patient supine whatever, whatever your notes are morbidly obese uh all those things explain a little bit of the story that you're handing off to the radiologist to read these these images so i hope that's been helpful We've talked about hospital settings, outpatient settings, portable mobile settings, um, and what a typical day looks like. And if you have any questions at all, just leave them in the comments section, and I'll be happy to answer them, and we'll move on to the next video.